Hello Nation, uh, today we're going to cover tanging and its techniques. Uh, before we start, there's one thing that caught my attention last week. I've been receiving comments about not mentioning other important subjects such as breathing, ambushing, etc. or referencing various other players. Not that I mind any comments that you leave, but I assume those are people who haven't seen the very first video I've made, so I'm just going to quickly address this. As I mentioned previously, I will cover all the topics that I can think of. But they're going to come in a small segments, which is going to be a video a week. There's generally so much information that I feel people could benefit from that I would have to talk for hours before it's done. I could fit in everything and just tell you that it's all about good breathing, being relaxed and etc. Uh, which in the end is kind of true. It's just I don't believe it's going to be all that useful. That's why I wanted to get into greater detail and show you some of the tips which I believe to be a bit different or at least not as commonly spoken about. Things that help me a lot in my progress. Also a big priority for me is not to only make these videos educational but also visually appealing and entertaining. If you looked at my videos from the very first one I've made you'll see how gradually the quality of video, audio and content has improved. And trust me, it takes a lot of time to make them before they're out in public. I spent around six to eight hours on one video before it's done, so it's just not really realistic for me to try and cover everything at once. I am by no means saying not to leave any comments uh, with what you like to see. Actually, I encourage you to do so and criticize the videos. It is only going to help me to make it better. I just wanted to explain why I haven't mentioned some of the stuff that people think is important yet. Anyway, let's get back to the topic. Tanging or articulation, any way you prefer calling it. The two common problems we have is the clarity and speed. And I will explain to you how to understand these conceptions a little bit better and share with you some cool ways to improve it. Let's start off by making sure we're aware of three different types of tanging. First one is a single tongue, or in other words, a regular articulation. It is when we articulate notes using the syllable ta or da. Second one is a double tongue. It is when you articulate two notes next to each other you're using syllable group taka or daga. The third one is a triple tongue. It is when you articulate a group of three notes, in other words, triplet, using syllables tataka or dadaga. Also, something that is pretty effective for lower brass players is switching the order of the syllables by saying takata or dagada. If you are completely new to triple tongue and you play a lower brass instrument, I would recommend you start learning it with takata rather than tataka. I personally use both of these for different circumstances, but that is pretty advanced, so we're not going to talk about that on this video. So, the main factor for clarity and speed is the movement of air during the time you're articulating. I found that the biggest factor determining the ability to move air while tanging is the actual positioning of your tongue in relation to your teeth. The closer you articulate to your teeth, the more air you cut off, therefore creating more clarity in the attack. However, this might affect your speed in a negative way. If you look at my fingers, this is the way our tongue moves when we articulate. The further towards our teeth we go, the greater range of motion there is, and it obviously requires more time for your tongue to reach the bouncing or the attack point. This will result into speed loss. Also, tonguing too close to your teeth might result into tongue completely blocking the space in between your lips and causing your tongue to fatigue and drop in speed significantly. Let me show you the difference between me cutting off the air and sustaining it while articulating. Obviously, you cannot see inside my mouth, but if you look closer at my lips when I'm trying to articulate very hard, you would be able to see the tip of the tongue. Also, there's a big difference in the way it sounds. Now, speed and clarity could also be affected by the size of your tongue in a minor way, but I'd say around 95% of your potential is upon the use of your technique. In order to practice your tonguing, it's very important to be aware of your tongue position and where it is at certain points of the attack. It will allow you to manipulate it to your favor. 
make sure to check out my previous video. It will help you to raise the awareness of your tongue. Let me show you how I practice these things and some exercises which will help you build up your tonguing skills. We will start off by playing some major scales. You can choose which one. All I want you to do is to articulate every note with that ta and make sure your tongue is very, very close to your teeth at the start of the attack. So as you can hear, the attack is very clear. However, if you tried to test how fast you can tongue this way, you would notice that it's not exactly as fast as you might like it to be. This is because the range of motion of the tongue is increased and there might be a potential decrease in the air movement as well. Let's try something completely opposite now. Play the exact same thing, only this time articulating more towards the back of your mouth, trying to keep your tongue as far away from your teeth as possible. So as you can hear now, the articulation sounds smoother and the notes are longer. Try and test your speed tongue this way and you'll definitely notice the ability to articulate faster. The reason why instead of telling you to play everything shorter or longer, I tell you to focus on your tongue movement is so you would build up the awareness. So whenever you face something more complex than a scaled pattern, you know exactly how to improve your speed or clarity in case it doesn't happen instinctually. Once you have a good clue of what is happening with your tongue when you articulate, you can start working on your double and triple tongue. The tricky part in both of these is the appearance of a syllable ka or ga. The funny thing about it is that all the issues we have with this part of tonguing are because of a tendency is completely opposite to the ones we have with a syllable ta. If you just tried saying ka multiple times by itself and feeling what the tongue does, you will notice that unlike ta, it bounces off or reaches the attack point quite far away from your teeth towards where the uvula is. So unlike ta, ka has a much shorter range of motion and we actually have a tendency to under articulate it, which is also something completely opposite to ta. This often causes a weakness and unevenness in double or triple tongue. Therefore, we need to isolate ka by practicing it on its own to a point where it becomes comfortable and again, till we are aware of what is happening with our tongue when we do it. Since we have already figured that speed is usually not an issue here, we're going to purely focus on clarity of the attack. Pick a scaled pattern again. In this case, I like doing some whole tone scales and make sure to tongue ka as hard, as close to your teeth as you can. <laughs> Once you become comfortable and familiar to both ta and ka as a separate syllable to articulate with, you can slowly start working on your double and triple tongue. Doing the exercises which I showed you before will ensure that you do not plateau in speed or clarity in any of these advanced techniques. And if you do, you will be aware of the ways on how to fix it. Of course, there are more to perfecting the tonguing techniques than positioning of your tongue, but it's probably one of the most important factors which you should be focusing on when building great bases for your articulation. As always, thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe for the upcoming videos. Your jaw movement is one of the most important factors for both low and high registers.